Thanks for staying with us. Now, I'm going by our quote for today by Anthony Robbins that says, every problem is a gift, that without problems, we would not grow. <laughs> Clearly, we know that Nigeria has a plethora of problems that require a solution. And some businesses are actually proffering these solutions. However, how much of it is being translated to growth, both as individual businesses and growth in the overall SME sector? Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. So I'm going to bring in our guest like in two minutes. But I wanted to hear AK and Tammy, your initial thoughts on growth and strategies for SMEs. You know, we have a lot of challenges in Nigeria. I'm just wondering why it's not translating to, you know, um, different kinds of, um, what's it called? businesses sprouting left, right, and center, and with visible proof of growth. So let me come to you, Tammy. Yeah, I mean, so it'll be interesting to actually find out what the situation is like today, because I recognize that this is ever-changing. So sometimes, you know, SMEs are facing licensing issues and general challenges in the operating environment. And then they come out of that. They devise means to adapt and survive. And then you hit them with evaluation. And then they come out of that. And then you hit them with taxation. It's just on all sides. You know, so so it's it's interesting. Um, again, let's choose to see challenge. Let's choose to see opportunities and not challenges, right? So I was actually looking forward to um, the conversation with Abiola to say, okay, what is happening exactly now, and how can small businesses um, begin to adapt so that they can get ahead of it? Absolutely. You know? So how about you, Ak? Well, talking about challenges, and then you know why we're not having businesses, you know, solving those challenges. I just want to acknowledge that some of these challenges are beyond the control of SMEs themselves mm -hmm. and, and not things that they would probably readily solve because of the situation we find ourselves. So we talk about things like infrastructure, security. How do you do that? You know, how do you tackle your electricity costs? But I think that this evening maybe would focus on the things that we can control, like yeah. rent, um, staff, employees, you know, um, maybe business tools that can help you with efficiency, so while there's some things that we can't help because of the country we find ourselves in, there are some things that, you know, if we're just, can lead to better efficiency and profitability. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think we, we dealt very um, vastly on the challenges that the SMEs go through, right? When we had that conversation on Friday. So it will actually be good for us to take, I mean, um, make good use of the time today to just really, really break down what are practical steps that businesses can use, you know, for effective um, growth, you know. So instead of wasting time on, um, what's it called, <laughs> on the challenges. All right, so Abiola Cham Salami is a world-class performance coach committed to raising world-class leaders and improving the productivity, um, productive capacity and brand perception of organizations and government. So he prefers to impact and influence by adopting a practical um, field, uh, practical approach filled with vivid stories and experiences. Now he's an alumnus of Harvard University, Lagos Business School and American Government International uh, Visitor Leadership Program. And he's joined us via Zoom tonight. Thank you so much, Abiola Cham, for joining us. Thank you for having me, ladies. Everybody looking stunning. This is really cool. You know, it's a relaxed environment to discuss business. Business is always serious, serious. But watching you guys having this conversation, I mean, it will be a joy this evening. Absolutely. We, we, Absolutely. we try to keep it fun and simple so that we do not complicate the matter. But you heard our banter, right, sure. on, you know, um, mm -hmm. growth and the fact that Nigeria is actually... Um, the biggest place where if you truly know what you're doing and you, are, you know the right strategies to follow, there are opportunities for growth. But this growth, we do not see translating in businesses. Why is this so? So um, a couple of things to think of. When people talk about entrepreneurship, when we talk about SMEs, people focus a lot more about on the status that, oh, I'm my own boss, right? Or I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a CEO right, uh, without necessarily focusing much on the performance of that business, on the productivity. So it's about the name, it's about the status, and for some it's about the activities, just because they are waking up and going somewhere every day, and then they don't have someone um, that they need to report to. 
you know, so that is that is on one side. On another side is uh, when we don't do the things that we're supposed to do, you know, to gain results, which I think will be the bulk of the conversation this evening. Now, um, also because SME uh, SMEs businesses, it's a stakeholder. It's a stakeholder thing, uh, which is their businesses that are working. There is the role of the government, but as um, AK said earlier, that we should focus on the things we can control and other things we can't control. So the reason there's much talk about opportunities and we're not seeing as much is what I've just shared, you know, uh, but we were focusing on how can we uh, now translate these opportunities into results, into tangible results, not just about the status of being CEO, of being my own boss, you know, all those things people would say back in the day that fire your boss, be mm. your own boss, get your boss out of the way, <laughs> you know, moving away from all of those kind of conversations into real, tangible, profitable results. Absolutely. Who wants to come in? <laughs> okay, I mean, I, I like, I, I can come in, and I like where you started from in uh, focusing on the substance of what you're doing. So it's not just about, oh, I'm my own boss, you know, I just want to be a CEO or anything. And also, I find that when you talk to a lot of small business owners or entrepreneurs, and, you know, you're trying to, give them solutions and you ask them like, what is the greatest problem you have now? They say to you, it's access to finance. That's mm. the first thing they say, oh, I need money to scale my business. And I'm like, okay, let's backtrack a bit. How about capacity building? How about some housekeeping issues um, that you need to do? You need to put your, put your books in order you know, you need to make sure that you understand your financial statements, your cash flow, are you positive or negative, what's coming in and all of that. that that's, that that's the kind of seriousness that makes you look bankable, that makes yeah. a capital yeah. locator want to invest in your business. So talking yeah. about yeah. that and looking at, you know, the environment um, today in Nigeria, I just wanted to understand some of the strategies that you would think would be okay for a typical uh, small business owner to use to essentially um, expand is net profit margin. So when I'm talking to small business owners, I don't think every time you should just focus on the top line. It's not just about revenues. Oh, okay, this is what is coming in, right? By the time you start to look at your expenses, start to look at your net profit margin, which is essentially your profit as a percentage of what you've sold, right? It gives you additional insights. It helps yeah. you to kind of start to uncover the kinds of trends that you can't see, you know, yes, the top yes. line is loan. So in right, terms right. of expanding revenue in terms of reducing your expenses what are the kind of strategies that you know they can start to go great on? you know uh, when we talk about strategy a lot of people think that it's one high valuative thing that is just you know up there it's just about planning simple planning paying attention to your business and seeing what to do to improve now i like the way you ask this question I mean, of course a finance expert and so ju just looking at the pnl just look at a pnl of of um, a regular business so it begins with, yes, the revenue on top, then the cost of goods, right? And then you get your profit, and then you look at the expenses. It is important that businesses pay attention, not just to the revenue on the top, but that cost of goods. Cost of goods, it, it includes how you move your raw, your raw material from wherever it is, your cost of transportation, and what how you transformed that raw material into the finished good that you need to deliver to your customers. And so one of the ways that we can start to improve that figure, because once you reduce that cost, it impacts on your net profit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. One of the ways to look at it, so do I necessarily need to um, um, get this raw material from a distant place where I need to incur as much transport cost, right? That, that is one. Two is that, do I need to get this raw material five days before, 10 days before, or a month before that I need to now incur storage costs Right. So if it is not perishable, if it's not perishable um, 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 raw material that you're using. Right. So you that that um, it's not a perishable raw material that you're using. There are ways that you can think think around that cost material. Now, if it is perishable, you can say that, yes, you would produce in two days. So you move it in in two days. So you are not incurring a lot of cost in terms of um, your, your storage facilities, so that you are not incurring cost as well in terms of um, um, transportation as well. It is important that for each SME to pay attention to that your PNL. Look at it, what you did last year, right? And then look at it, what are the areas that you can reduce your cost? Another one, and let's move further down. Another one is on admin expenses, staffing, for example. Now, you are an SME. 
uh, yes, I know you cannot do this business alone. I know you need people to do the business. And then there are some SMEs just because they want to uh, let everybody think that they are recruiting the best of the brains. Um, and then you incur huge costs because you're, you're employing someone that's from an Ivy League school, right? And I mean, Ivy League doesn't necessarily mean the person is not pure. And pure, P-U-R-E, previously unidentified recruitment error, right? The, oh fact my God. Is, <laughs> the fact that the person has a strong accent, you know, British accent, uh, American accent, whatever accent, you know, and the person who comes from an Ivy League doesn't necessarily mean that the person is a good fit for your business, mm -hmm. right? So it's always, it's not about ego tripping. You know, it's not about ego tripping. It's not about trying to show that you have quality. You know, uh, by the by the caliber of people you recruit, what you want is whoever can give you tangible results. What you want is whoever has the knowledge, the skill, and the attitude to move your business forward. Not necessarily all of that. So you want to pay attention to your to your staff cost to see how much you know how much are you paying for that vis-a-vis uh, -vis the productivity of that staff. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that don't recruit Ivy League. I'm saying that when you recruit Ivy League, be sure that it is giving you the profit that it's bringing is improving your numbers it's not about your emotions it's not about your ego um, emotions and ego don't send money emotions and ego don't send numbers numbers are rational emotions are irrational ego is irrational and what you want to do in in order to ensure that you manage your cost effectively you know pay attention to some of those things and on top of that list is uh, your cost of goods your overhead right in terms of staffing Okay. AK, you want to come in? Okay. <laughs> I saw you smiling yes. all through. I'm, I'm thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, I smiled because he, he touched on, on something that I really wanted to mention. Because if you look at the PwC reports uh, for 2020, it breaks down where SMEs spend the most on. I, of course, electricity is one of the main things that they spend on. And then you look at things like rent, um, cost of capital, employee costs, taxes, and transportation. Now, my question really is, how can SMEs leverage technology to cut off some of these costs? Because I see how you talked about, you know, uh, in terms of the logistics when it comes to their goods, um, and then you talked about inventory. Mm. But can technology actually help, you know, ameliorate some of these costs that SMEs have? Sure, sure. Yes, technology can. Um, I talked about transportation. I talked about um, uh, storage facilities. I talked about staffing. You realize that with technology, you may not, depending on the size of your business and what the requirements are, you may not necessarily need as much people as you presently have, right? Um, for you yourself as an entrepreneur, having a small team, having some just little skill on Excel, right? Just little skill with Excel. You may not necessarily need to bring in a finance expert that is on your payroll. I mean, you can have a consultant, right, that comes in once in a while to work with you. You know, so just with simple, simple Microsoft Excel, right? You, you are able to put in your numbers. You are able to monitor your numbers from time to time. Um, there are a number of apps, you know, that people can use as well. So, for example, let's talk about social media. Uh, that yes, you want to, you need to keep engaging because your customers, uh, your target market, they are on social media. And by the way, it is important to note that the fact that everybody is saying everybody is, is on social media does not mean that your customer is on social media. You may just be wasting time, wasting money if your target market is not on social media. Now, I'm not saying you don't be there at all, but you don't have to be heavy on social media if you are not making money from, if the buying authority for your business is not on social media, if your consumers and your customers are not on social media, yeah, be there just for presence, but not necessarily heavy. But you realize that because of the conversation that, hey, social media is a new thing and everybody's there. There's a reason why we're on Plus TV, by the way. It is because there's still a lot of people watching TV. Yeah. There's a reason radios, uh, radio stations have not gone off yet. It is because there's a target market that they are serving. Mm -hmm. So it's important to pay attention to that target market. And then if you must do social media, I mean, there are apps, there are tools that you can use that you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of money or a lot of time or necessarily employing someone who sits there just to do graphics and post every now and then, right? So there's TweetDesk, for example, where you can program whatever it is you want to share over a period of time. You spend some one time to design and to upload, and then you put the date on it, when date and time that you wanted to post, right? So that makes your work efficient. That makes you put your time into other things. That makes you put your money into other things as well. It is important to embrace technology. It is important to master technology. And by the way, when we say tech, people should not also think about 
something that is very, you know, that is very difficult to do. Because Just I was coming to that. Things, oh. <laughs> by the way, your phone, your phone is a technology device. And your phone as an entrepreneur, there are loads of things you can use it to do. With your phone, you can manage your time effectively, which is even a great, one of the greatest um, 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 uh, challenges a lot of entrepreneurs face. You know, so now you are your boss. When you were, if you, if you had worked in a structured environment before, while you had a boss, you had someone always checking on you, someone always asking you for feedback, someone always giving you work. Now that you're your boss, you need to learn personal leadership. Your phone, the phone that you always used to take selfie, that you always used to chat with your friends, that you always used to do other things, that phone can be your, can be your tool to help you, to guide you. you know that there, there are a number of apps on the phone. There's Calendly that you can use to schedule your time. You know, um, the other planning tools that you have right there on your phone that you don't even need to pay for. Yeah. Uh, somebody said that there are many people who that, that are using phones that are smarter than them, right? Because they don't know all the things that they could use the phone to do productively. And that is free, by the way. You don't need to pay monthly subscription for some of those things. You don't need to subscribe. It is right there on your phones. Okay, so I was going to ask that, you know, I'm happy you talked about it because I had noted that, you know, some of these tech solutions, some businesses, they, the, the kind of tech solutions they require is not so much of um, the, of what they can do on their phones. They really, really require, um, you know, sure. maybe coming to set up a software within their premises and all of that. But I was going to ask you that, you know, you are talking about practical solutions towards, you know, I mean, strategies for growth, right? Can businesses, because I see this happen all the time, AK will crucify me because they, they will keep telling you that, uh, uh, what's it called? They have workshops, they have capacity building, blah, blah, blah. But I believe some of this capacity building and workshop is not tailored for a blanket, like a, a blanket solutions for all businesses. I feel that if businesses, small businesses begin to get something like a one-on-one -on -one kind of relationship where you come into this particular small business and you look at it and break down the solution that is tailored to that business. Maybe we'll start to see the growth, you know, and the sustenance that we're, why is AK laughing? And the sustenance that we're asking for. Because most times, yes, they will tell you the banks, they are doing training, you know, and everything. But because it does not meet my specific need, you know, I might not even see the solution that they are trying to bring to me. Do you agree with this? Mm. And if it is true, how do we make that work? Okay, so Uwa, to be fair on these banks, right, they know that it is it is um, challenging for them, you know, to gather 10 entrepreneurs in fashion, another 20 entrepreneurs in tech, another 50 entrepreneurs, you know, in, in agribusiness, and then just focus on them just like that. So that's why they bring everybody together and share what everybody would use. However, <laughs> how, so there's a gain in that. But however, it doesn't always touch down to what they will all, what everybody needs at every point in time. Mm. So I agree with you, you know, on that. But it's important that we applaud that they, they are doing something, right? It's important that we recognize that <laughs> that they are doing something. But in addition to that, we now need to now take it a bit higher. So um, these banks and other organizations, you know, can also have bespoke solutions, because right now on this show uh, we are talking about SMEs, and there there are a thousand and one industries. You know, across these SMEs, and the people watching this will start taking what they can use that applies to them. Yeah. On this show, this evening, we cannot focus on one because the conversation is not a focus on a yeah. particular one. So um, I will probably also encourage that um, ways, you know, in subsequent editions, you know, you can have agri business, you can have tech, you know, you can just focus, you can have bespoke, so that you talk to, uh, you speak to the specific issues. You know, for specific businesses, um, I hope it's something you can consider, you know, as, as you continue. Absolutely. That's a so, fantastic strategy. So, AK, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so AK, well done. But well, we can do more. We can do more. <laughs> you know, All right, you know, we're going to take a break. Let, um, AK, um, hold on. We're going to take a break. Defense. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 